Debbie Gatlin, and it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's the Christmas season. So I want to say Merry Christmas to each and every one of you and have a blessed and a joyful new year, a new year filled with the purposes of God coming forth, a new year where his kingdom is coming and his will is being done in your lives and the lives of your family, a new year where God Almighty is showing himself strong on your behalf. Have a blessed new year and a blessed Christmas. Now, I'm going to talk to you about one of the Christmas stories. This story is all about worship. It begins in Matthew, the second chapter, and it's about the Magi or the wise men from the east. They saw a star, and that star declared to them that a child had been born, a child that would be the king of all kings. And they began to seek that child. From the time they saw that star, they began to seek. The Bible says, if you'll seek him, you will find him. And so they began to seek him. And the Bible says they ended up in, in Jerusalem. And when they came into Jerusalem, it, it says, they said, where is he who was born the king of the Jews? For we have come to worship him. They came for one reason. They came to find this child so that they might do him homage. They might worship him. They might adore him. Well, when they came into the city, the city was in an uproar because Herod, had, Herod King Herod, loved to kill people that that were two big kings or anyone that would threaten his throne. And um, when Herod found out these wise men had come seeking a king, he gathered his, his priest together and asked where this would take place. And Micah showed that Bethlehem was the place. So in Micah, the fifth chapter, talks about, about in Bethlehem, this small little place, a king being born. So he spoke to the wise men and said, Go find this child and worship him. And when you find him, let me know that I too may worship him. And so the wise men began to leave. And as they left, they, the star appeared again. And the star begins to lead them. And it leads them to where the child is. It stops right where he is. And they rejoiced, the Bible says, with great joy when they saw the star. And they came into where the child was with his mother. And they fell down before him and they worshipped him. And they opened up to him gifts of frankincense and myrrh and gold. Now, again, let me say this again. This story is all about worship. And in John, the fourth chapter, it talks about God is seeking those that will worship him in spirit and truth. God loves people that will turn their attention upon him and will say, you are worthy, God. You are mighty, God. You are glorious. There's nothing you can't do. How wonderful you are, how holy you are, how awesome you are. And these, these men, these wise men, sought the Lord. Now, the Bible says, if you'll seek him, you will find him. In Matthew 7, it says, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find Knock, and the door shall be opened to you. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks, let me say that again, if you seek, if you seek, then the Bible promises that you will find, and knock, and the door, it will be open. God says if you seek him, you will find him. In Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, it says, and you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart, and I will be found by you. God promises, hey, are you hungry? Hey, do you want to know me? Seek me. I'll let, you be, I'll let you find me. Seek me. I'll reveal my heart to you. Seek me. I'll show myself to you. I'll reveal myself to you. I'll let you find me. I'll let you know more and more of me. Now, I love this. In Hebrews, the 11th chapter, it talks about those that you want God, you want God, you want God, so you keep on coming and you keep on seeking, you're keeping on. The Bible says, says in Hebrews 11 that, those that, that, that God is a rewarder of those that will diligently seek him. That God says, you know what? I will reward you if you keep on coming to me. I will reward you if you keep on asking. I will reward you if you keep on coming and seeking my heart and seeking my ways and seeking to know me. I'll reward you. I'll I tell you what. I want to know God. 
and I want to be rewarded by God. I'm sure God's rewards are great and powerful and wonderful. To know his heart, for him to share his secrets with you, to have his presence, to receive the gifts of God, to have God fighting on your behalf because you are rewarded by him, because he rewards those that want him. He rewards those that seek his heart. He rewards those that they, they are lovers. They love God. That you're not just a church goer. You're not just a religious person. You're not just a, oh, I'll do my Sunday duty or my Wednesday night duty, but you love God. He's part of your everyday life. You're devoted to him. You want him constantly. When you get up in the morning, you're in love. I got to know him. Well, all through the day, you're thinking about him. You're focusing on him. You're worshiping him. God loves that. And I'll tell you what, he will reward you. God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He will reward you. He loves you. In John, the fourth chapter, is the story of the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman who Jesus asked for a drink of water. And the story just goes on about how they're talking about water and Jesus talking to her about living water. But toward the end of the story, Jesus begins to tell her about, talk to her about worship. She says to him, she says, I perceive you're a prophet. We worship on this mountain. But you Jews, you say Jerusalem is the place where you have to worship. And Jesus says, a time is come where neither on this mountain or in Jerusalem shall we worship. You worship what you don't know, but we Jews worship what we know, for salvation is of the Jews. And then Jesus goes on and says, a time has come and now is where true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for such the Father seeks to be his worshipers. Again, God says, a time has come, it's now is, where God says people are going to worship him in spirit and truth, and that God Almighty, he's looking. He's looking for worshipers. He's looking for those that will love him. He's looking for those that, that hearts say, I've got to have him. I have to have him. I've got to know your ways. I've got to know your heart. I've got to see this one that saved my soul. I've got to know your heart and mind. I want you in every part of my life. I worship you. I adore you. You're wonderful. You're glorious. God is seeking those kind of worshipers. Now, the word worship, I love this word. This, the word worship talks about a little puppy dog. Ever see one of those little dogs that, that you go in the house and they're just like, they're just, they're so excited about seeing you and that you're the best thing ever. That they just love you and they're all licky and they just love you. And it's like, I'm so excited. That word, the word worship talks about, yes, bowing down, being prostrate before the Lord. It was the oriental custom that when you came before someone of rank and nobility, a king, that you would bow down before them and put your head upon their ground or lie prostrate before them. But God says, I want more than that. It's like these little puppy dogs that just so adore and love, and they lick their master's hands. You ever get one of those licky puppies, and you just go down, and they just lick you all over your face and everywhere else, and they're so excited. God wants a people like that. You're so excited about knowing him, so excited about his presence, about being able to come before him. You're excited about him. You're in love with him. God wants a people that will seek after him. And again, he is a rewarder of those that will diligently seek after him. Now, I was praying, and as I was praying, he just began to show me this doggy bone. And it was a little green doggy bone. And I remember that we'd just gone up to our friend's house, and they had just got a new dog. And this dog's name is Molly. And he's Tyler's little doggy. And this doggy, he loves everybody, but especially Tyler. And he makes Tyler feel like he is worth everything. And Tyler's only about six years old, but he loves this little Molly doggy. It's his doggy, just his doggy. And um, when Molly sees Tyler, he's like, he's jumping up and down and he's all wiggly and licky and he's so excited about seeing Tyler. And you know what, Tyler, he, they had to take all these doggy biscuits and put them up high because every time Molly would do that to Tyler, Tyler would run and get one of those doggy bones and give it to little Molly. And Molly just loves Tyler and he just 
as he'd give them that little doggy bone, it was a reward, a reward. Now, God wants you to know, I am a rewarder of those that love me. I'm a rewarder of those that seek me. I'm a rewarder of worshipers. I will hold nothing back from those that will focus upon me, those that they just want to be where I am, those that see how wonderful I am and let me know, that, that declare my goodness and my grace, that spend time just before me, just adoring me and worshiping, worshiping me, honoring me, blessing me, praising me, loving me. God says, I will reward those kind of people. And again, God says, you know what? If you'll seek me, you're going to find me. So I'll reward you. And you know what? You'll be found by me. I will give to you. I will bless you if you'll be a worshiper. Now I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to ask God to teach you how to be worshipers, all of us, that we would become people where we just walk around. We're just worshipers. We're blessing God. We're giving thanks to him. We're praising him. We're keeping our hearts close to him. We're lovers. We're lovers. We're first of all, lovers. We're lovers of God. So Father, I just thank you for your precious ones. I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you turn their hearts, Lord, to become worshipers, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you turn their hearts, make them have hearts after you that long for you, that seek after you, that know, Lord Jesus, that as they seek after you, they're going to find you. As they seek after you, Lord, you're going to reveal yourself to them. As they seek after you, Lord, that you're going to reward them. As they seek after the, you, Lord, that you'll give them wisdom, that you'll give them interpretations of dream. And that as they seek after you, Lord God, that you'll instruct them how to pray, Lord God. As they seek after you, Lord God, that you'll reward them, that you're a rewarder of those that seek after you, that the gifts of the Spirit are theirs, Lord God, that your very nature becomes a part of them, Lord, because they're coming before you. God, we all as we all with unveiled faces beholding as a mirror the, the glory of God. Well, you know what? Lord, your word says we're being changed into the same image from glory to glory. God, one of your rewards is just becoming more and more like you. God, I just thank you, Lord. Touch your precious ones during this time, Lord, as they begin to direct their hearts, Lord, to this new year, Father God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you show them, Lord, things you want to do, Lord God, on their behalf, Father God. Things you want them to step forward in faith to believe you for, Lord. And things, Lord God, that you want, Lord, to happen in their families and their friends, the glory that you want to pour out, Lord, on their behalf, Lord God. On their behalf, Father God, oh God, I just bless your precious ones this day. Lord, let them have the most beautiful Christmas. And Lord God, I just thank you for a blessed new year. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You have the most wonderful Christmas and the most blessed new year. God loves you. Oh, he loves you. He loves you. God bless you. Bye-bye.